Hello, I'm Dobri Dien, and welcome back to Czerny Balog. And as you can see, today we're at the railway station, because Czerny Balog doesn't just have the only league football ground in the world with a steam railway running through it, it also has the only steam railway in the world that runs through a league football ground. So we're going to take a ride and try and find out more about the story behind it, how these little trains once helped to fight off the Nazis, and then were nearly killed off by the communists before making a comeback thanks to the incredible work of local volunteers. But there's also something that's been bugging me. When we went to the football, we asked the club why they built their ground on a railway line. And they told us it was only built there after the railway closed down in the 1980s. So they thought the train was never going to come back. Yeah, yeah. But if you were paying very close attention, which at the time I wasn't, you might have spotted something earlier in the video that means that can't actually be true. So what's the real story? Welcome to football's most famous railway. This is the Czerny Hron Railway, a preserved narrow gauge railway that runs along the valley of the Czerny Hron River in the hills of central Slovakia. And from here at the main station in Czerny Balog, trains head off in three different directions. We're going to catch the one going to a place called Dobroč because that's the one that goes through the football ground. Now, before we can answer the question about how exactly the railway ended up going through the football ground, we really need to ask, why was the railway built in the first place? Although these days the trains spend most of their time carrying tourists who want to see the beautiful Slovak scenery, that's not why it's here. The railway was originally built as an industrial line carrying wood for the local logging industry. It's a very good view of some logs. This kind of narrow gauge industrial forest railway was once common across all of Central and Eastern Europe. There used to be about 40 of them in Slovakia alone. Admittedly, back then it wasn't called Slovakia yet. In fact, when this line first opened in 1909, the area was still part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So it was the Ministry of Agriculture in Budapest who ordered the construction of the railway. And the first section ran from Czerny Balog down the valley to a place called Hronets, where timber could be transferred onto the national railway network and transported around the rest of the country. But in the next few years, the system expanded rapidly. The branch that we're riding on was one of several extensions built by prisoners of war during World War I, and that includes the famous section of track through the football ground. Although, at the time, the football ground wasn't here yet, so it was just a section of track. And we'll come back to that story later. Anyway, by the 1920s, so many workers had moved into the area that they started running passenger trains as well, and they continued building more and more extensions, which meant by the 1930s, the railway had nearly as many branches as the trees did. And that turned out to be very useful a few years later, when World War II broke out, and it became a vital supply network for Slovak resistance fighters up in the hills. This, of course, made the railway a military target, and unfortunately, several of the original steam locos were destroyed after a direct hit on the depot in Hronets. But ultimately, Czerny Balog was one of the few places in Slovakia that was never conquered by the Nazis, and that was at least partly thanks to these little trains. Although admittedly, not this one. As far as I can work out, only one of the locos that was here in wartime still survives. The others were either destroyed by that direct hit, or they were scrapped in the years afterwards. So instead, the volunteers here have been rescuing engines that were facing a similar fate in other places, like this beautifully restored 1930s diesel railcar that was saved from scrap after the closure of the Czech railway that it used to run on. And you have to say, they've done a fantastic job on it. But hang on, rewind a few seconds. Never mind the beautifully restored railcar, why is there another football pitch here? What's going on? What is the deal with this railway and its weird attraction to football pitches? Once again, this channel asks the important questions. Now, like I said, when we went to the Tatran game, we asked one of their coaching staff why the club built their ground on a railway line, and he told us it happened after the railway closed down in 1982. But the same guy also gave me a booklet about the history of the club, and if you look closely at this team photo from 1970, 
you can see the players are standing in front of something that looks a lot like the same grandstand that we sat in with the railway in front of it. And if you look at this photo from 1967, you can even see the clubhouse in the background. Clearly, Tatran were already playing here long before 1982. In fact, I messaged Petter to see if he could find out, and we're pretty sure they've played on the same pitch, with the trains running alongside it, ever since they were first formed in 1933. But if that's true, then we still haven't answered the question. Why did Tatran build their ground where they did? Well, perhaps we're already looking at the answer. In 1933, I suspect Tatran's ground would have looked very similar to this. Just a simple playing field right next to the railway. Dobroch and Cherny Balog are in the same narrow valley. There's not much flat land available around here, and it's quite possible there was just nowhere better to put the two football pitches. The big difference is, Tatran then grew as a club, and climbed up the league, and eventually they needed to build some facilities and some seats and turn their playing field into a proper football ground. And where was the best place to put the seats? Well, on one side of the pitch there was already a grandstand-shaped slope. Sure, there was a narrow-gauge railway sort of in the way, but it was much easier to just build the grandstand there than try and move the railway or try and move the football club. And so we ended up with what we have today, the only steam railway in the world that runs through a league football ground. Although we very nearly didn't. On the 31st of December 1982, the government of Czechoslovakia announced the closure of the Chernihron Railway. At the time, this was the last industrial forest railway still operating in the country. The others had gradually disappeared in the post-war years, as more and more freight started to be transported by road instead. But despite this being the last one, the ruling Communist Party ordered that everything from the locos and the wagons to the tracks themselves should be sold off and scrapped by 1985. And that basically started happening. The authorities began to rip up the tracks and scrap the remaining wagons. But almost immediately, a group of local railway enthusiasts started to put the tracks back. And perhaps most importantly, they managed to get the line listed as a state cultural monument. That meant they were going to be able to keep the railway alive. All they had to do now was rebuild nearly the whole thing from scratch. It took a decade of work and hundreds of volunteers from all over the former Czechoslovakia, but on the 1st of January 1993, a steam locomotive retook the rails from Hronets to Čierny Balog. And a few months later, the Čierny Hron railway was officially reopened. And that's how we got a steam railway that runs through a league football ground. And then we lost it, and then we got it back again. And we nearly lost it again earlier this year when a property developer blocked the line to Dobroch, saying they owned the land and wanted to build on it. Luckily, because it's a cultural monument, they were forced to stop. To sum up, like a bear with unfinished business, the railway is still not quite out of the woods yet. Its survival depends heavily on volunteers, and they've got ambitious plans to run electric commuter trains in future to make it more financially sustainable. But after surviving the Nazis, the Communists, and the property developers, Hopefully this unique piece of railway and football heritage is finally here for good. If you'd like to ride on a vintage steam train through a 6th division Slovak football ground, the Czerny Fron Railway runs every day from April until mid-September. A return ticket costs us €12 Euros each, and it's half price for kids, students and disabled passengers. There's space on board for wheelchairs and pushchairs, and while it's very much not level boarding, help is available if you need it. Of course, if they ever get the electric trains running, that might make things a bit easier. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.